and welcome to DexTools Academy. In today's episode, we will give you an introduction about technical and fundamental analysis of cryptocurrencies. And we explain what metrics you exactly need to look at when you want to look further into the project of a token. Mastering technical and fundamental analysis needs to be learned. And we want to show you how you can do that without missing important information. I will first give you an insight about fundamental analysis, then well, we'll dive a bit into the technical analysis. If you didn't do it yet, please like our video, hit the subscribe and bell button that you don't miss out on our upcoming videos. Well, the fundamental analysis of cryptocurrencies involves taking a deep dive into the available information about the token you're researching. So every token, except most meme coins, which are mainly being traded for fun, uh, has a project behind while the token should reflect the valuation of the actual project. So the goal is to reach the conclusion on whether the asset is over or undervalued. But how exactly do I perceive a particular cryptocurrency's value? Uh, so the first thing you should look at when analyzing a project is looking if the token is economically active. Uh, check its trading volume and price action. Uh, you can do that easily by checking charts on tax tools and the trading history right under the chart. Uh, when the token is on reputative exchanges like Binance, for example, it's a very good sign as these exchanges have special listing criteria and Binance just won't list a coin if these criteria don't match. You shouldn't rely on other people's opinion too much, but check what other people are saying about the project. You can do that on YouTube and watch videos about the project and researching social media like Twitter, Telegram, Discord and or Lux. Uh, if you didn't find any major issues, you can go on with the research and start digging further into the project. Important points for researching are the history of the token, tokenomics, Check the project's documentation, which gives info about staking, rewards, mining and consensus mechanism. Uh, read the white paper and take a look at the timeline or roadmap of the project, which um, the projects normally publish on their website. Uh, by the way, on icodrops.com, you can see screenshots from plans uh, in the past, which you can compare to the actual state of the project, like checking if they delivered or not what they promised in the past. If they delivered everything they promised before, uh, it's a very good sign that the project doesn't rely on empty promises. Going further to checking the team. Important to check the CEO and founder of the project. Their backgrounds, look for them on social media. On LinkedIn, you can find good info about what they did before, for example. Uh, Ex-members of well-known companies like Google or Microsoft doesn't mean anything if they only worked for a few months in that company and got fired for not delivering their work, for example. Uh, so be careful with that. Uh, you can find good info on YouTube, interviews with the CEO or founder of a project uh, to get an idea about their thoughts. Tokenomics, I mentioned shortly before, is an incredibly important concept for you to understand when you're trying to decide which crypto to invest in, since the factors included will definitely affect your investment. For those who need a short recap of the definition, a crypto token is a type of cryptocurrency that represents an asset or specific use and resides on the blockchain. Tokens can be used for investment purposes, um, to store value or to make purchases and often provide incentives to their token holders. Um, now tokenomics. The term is formed by pairing up the two words um, token and economics. So the word tokenomics basically points to the economics of a token. Um, the tokenomics for a particular crypto token is usually well discussed in the project white paper and it should help you understanding the functionality, objective, allocation policy and more of the crypto token. The factors of the tokenomics are first, the allocation and distribution of tokens, second, the supply of the token, 
third, market capitalization, and fourth, the token model. Um, you need to make sure that you know how the token is distributed. There are two basic ways most tokens are generated. They are either pre-mined or released through a fair launch. A fair launch is when a cryptocurrency is mined, earned, owned and governed by the entire community. There is no early access to the token or private allocations before making them public. Um, coins like Bitcoin, Dogecoin or Yearn Finance are good examples of um, a fair launch token. In the contrary, pre-mining is when a number of the crypto tokens are generated and distributed among some exclusive addresses, usually project developers or other team members and early investors before going public. What to check here if um, there's any wallet that keeps hoarding a significant percentage of the circulating token supply since the means um, there's a huge risk of the whale dumping the holding and dropping the price of the token in an instant. You can check the holders in the blockchain explorer of the chain where the token belongs to, like um, for Ethereum Ether scan, for Binance Smart Chain, Binance Smart Chain scan, for Polygon, Polygon scan, and so on. Um, if the project is distributing the tokens to as many participants as possible, uh, that means like as many holders as possible, you can assume the project is a legitimate one and genuinely cares about the further development. A primary component of a crypto's tokenomics is the supply of it. Now, there are three types of supply you should check for when it comes to crypto. There is the circulating supply, the total supply and the maximum supply. The circulating supply of a token is the number of tokens that have been issued so far and are currently in circulation. The total token supply is the number of tokens that exist at the moment, excluding those which might have gotten burned. And finally, the maximum supply of a token is the maximum number of tokens that can ever be generated. For some tokens, there is no determined maximum supply. Um, if you noticed, the circulating supply of a particular token has been regularly increased by the project developers over time, you can assume that the value of the token will be going up in the future. On the other hand, if there is too many tokens being released at once or too frequently, the value of the token might go down. The market capitalization of a token shows the entire amount of funds that have been invested in the crypto project so far. You can also check on icodrops.com how much funds have been raised for the project. Along with market cap, you can also check the fully diluted market cap of a project, which is the theoretical market cap if the maximum supply of the token was already in circulation. Uh, this would give you a good idea of how you should value a token. The higher a token's market cap and lower its circulating supply, the more valuable it could be in the future. Make sure you know if the token is an inflationary or deflationary token. An inflationary token like fiat money doesn't have a maximum supply and will continue to be produced as the time goes on. A deflationary token model is simply the opposite. Where there is a maximum supply, the token is capped at, like Bitcoin's 21 million. Most proof-of-stake tokens, like Ethereum, are inflationary so as to reward the validators and delegators in the network. There are some crypto tokens which have a dual token model, where one token is used for funding within the ecosystem and the other one is a utility token. Keep in mind that you should follow regularly news and updates on your favorite projects as crypto is moving very fast and you should be well informed to not miss out on important updates which could change the valuation of the project. Uh, read the project's latest Medium article and most projects have an announcement channel on Telegram. You should be always well informed if you follow those. 
Um, as you are now prepared for finding details regarding the project's team and the team members' backgrounds, the token historical performance, uh, its use cases, tokenomics, roadmaps and other important information, you can now take a further step into how you gain data from technical analysis, what Weil will explain you now. Thanks, Julie, for that awesome explanation on fundamental analysis. Let's get right into technical analysis, also known as TA or charting. It is the study of previous price and volume to help you get an educated guess on where price may be going. It'll give you awesome entry and exit points and help you buy and sell profitably. We'll go into the basics of TA when we'll start with trend. Is it an uptrend, downtrend, sideways? That's something I ask myself when I start looking at any cryptocurrency or asset. And remember this, the trend is your friend. You want to trade in the same direction. So this isn't an uptrend with consecutive higher highs and higher lows. And this is in a downtrend with consecutive lower highs and lower lows. And this is Bitcoin that's been ranging for the last 70 days with pretty much similar highs and lows. Let's get right into support and resistance. We're looking for multiple touch points areas of strength and change of polarity. So prior support turning into resistance and prior resistance turning into support. So you can see how this has respected the support very well and you could buy, use this as a buying opportunity every time it comes into the support. And with TA, it kind of forces you to use some risk management uh, skills and tools and put that in place because if it breaks the support, then you know that your theory or you know your trend line has been invalidated. So you want to cut that trade out instead of just aimlessly buying. If we zoom out a little bit, you can see that there's resistance over top. And if you notice that, you can either take a short and or cover your long or not take bigger positions. So Let's zoom out a little bit longer. That same resistance turned into support. That's that change of polarity we were talking about. And those are some of my favorite buying setups because it's very easy to do. And most of the time it bounces off the prior resistance, which was turned into support. And here's Bitcoin again in that channel. And this is Scalper's Paradise where they're long support and shorting resistance. And the next is price patterns, continuation patterns and reversal patterns. So price can't just shoot up to the moon in one, you know, arrow or one candle. It needs to consolidate. It needs to just, you know, take a breather at some point. So then we'll see these continuation patterns. Here we have a bullish pennant, which broke out to the upside and continued the trend that it was in. And you have reversal patterns. So after a move has been exhausted or been trending in that one direction for a long time, you'll get reversal patterns. So here's a double top and it, um, uh, ended up breaking down here. Next is indicators. We're going to go over moving averages and RSI. Moving average is the most used indicator actually. And we're going to go right onto Dextools.io to show you how to use both of them. We're on Dextboard right now. All the charting tools and indicators you'll need will be found in the pair explorer. So let's head to the Ethereum pair and let's maximize the chart and get right into moving averages. So moving averages are the most used trading indicator. They are helping you with identifying the trend. They help with support and resistance. And generally when they're sloped down, you're in a downtrend and when they're sloped up, you're in an uptrend. And as I mentioned, you want to trade with the trend. The trend is your friend. So when the price breaks down uh, across a moving average, people are taking shorts. And when you are breaking above a moving average, you could buy or take a long. So you can see here when we broke down, it used it as resistance as well, and then kept coming down until we broke back above. And then when we broke a back above, uh, back above, we used it as support once, support twice, three times and then failed for the fourth time and then broke back down. So you can really uh, easily and simply formulate a buying and selling strategy using one moving average. There are strategies using two moving averages and we're going to make an in-depth video on golden crosses and death crosses and how to use multiple moving averages to take buys and sells. So let's go into RSI now. That's the relative strength index and relative strength index measures the momentum and strength of a market. So right here, you can see that when we're above the 70, that is overbought. 
there's a lot of strength in the market uh, generally people are buying and you see a lot of you know more FOMO and when you're under 30 you see oversold more fear more sell pressure and generally uh, a, buy, a better buying opportunity so you can see here how we set up a high in price and a high in RSI but then we failed to set up another high in RSI but we set up a, a high in price so we call that a divergence and that's a non-confirmation so RSI is trending down while price is going up and that is a sell signal and you saw that price crashed um, right after that and you can notice that the RSI was in uh, oversold under 30 and that was actually a great buying opportunity paired with a bullish engulfing candle as well so I hope you guys enjoyed this technical analysis overview and we'll see you guys in the next episode.